In this first episode of 2022, I'm going to be talking about productivity. I've made a pact to become more productive, to be more focused, to be more accountable this year. And at the Vacation Rental Women's Summit in December of last year, I had a chat with Dana Lubner from Rent Responsibly about her productivity hacks. And I was intrigued with what she did to make herself productive. So uh, we are going to be talking to Dana about all those things that she does to make life easier and more strategic and more effective. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new, and what will help make your business a success. Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. This is your host, Heather Bayer. I think I said in that introduction that this is the first episode of 2022. It's actually the second, but what the heck? We're talking today about productivity because I decided to become more productive this year. I'm like most of you. I'll get up in the morning. I'm going to open my email and scroll through Facebook and Instagram And before I know it, it's 10 o'clock and I really haven't got much done. I say it's like most of you. There's probably many of you out there thinking, I don't do that. That's not me. I am efficient and organised. Well, I'm so pleased (laughs) that you are already there. But I'm not. And it's taken me a lot of years to get to this point where I know I have to become more productive. So, At the Vacation Rental Women's Summit last December, I was sat at a table uh, networking. We were having a chat with my friend Tyanne Marsink. Uh, Hey, Tyanne, you know I mention you all the time (laughs) in these podcasts, and I'm actually getting you in there right at the beginning, but you may not remember this conversation, but we had a conversation about being productive. And I believe you said to me, Dana is the one to talk to because She has a ton of productivity hacks and tips that she uses to make her busy, busy day more productive. Dana is head of leadership development at Rent Responsibly. And Rent Responsibly is the community building and education platform for local short-term rental alliances. Now, my company, Cottage Link Rental Management, has been following Rent Responsibly for a long time. We're dealing with all sorts of issues with municipalities and townships and regulations and legislation. And the material and resources that come from Rent Responsibly are absolutely vital to helping us progress and proceed through all the obstacles and challenges that we have ahead of us in terms of legislation. So towards the end of this uh, chat with Dana, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about Rent Responsibly and what they do. They had the whole team there at the Vacation Rental Women's Summit. It was great to meet everybody. It's a crowd of incredibly passionate people who want to smooth the way for all of us who are in this business and who are dealing with, you know, the the common challenges that face us through local regulations, etc. But before that, I'm going to be talking to Dana about these productivity hacks that she uses on a day-to-day basis in the hope that we can pick up on at least one of them and take it forward and help ourselves make our days and our weeks and our months and our year better. So without further ado, let's move right on over to my discussion with Dana Lubner of Rent Responsibly. So I'm super delighted to have with me today Dana Lubner from Rent Responsibly. We talked before about her company, Effortless Rentals. So we're going to catch up with Dana now and find out what she's doing about the transition from Effortless Rental to Rent Responsibly and also to talk about your productivity hacks, which I'm so excited to hear about. Hello, Dana. 
Hello. Thanks so much for having me on your show again, Heather. I am thrilled to be talking about this topic. I'm already feeling giddy on uh, <laughs> sharing productivity tips with the audience here. Well, it was it was so funny. We're sitting in, a, I don't think Tyann remembers, but I think you do. We sat at a table uh, at uh, in New Orleans at the Vacation Rental Women's Summit and the topic of, I don't know, productivity came up or it's something to do with iPhone hacks. And Tyann said, oh, Dana's the one to talk to. <laughs> So I thought, well, this would be great to kick the new year off as as we're all thinking, you know, we all we all go into January, don't we, with with goals and I'm going to do this better and I'm going to stop scrolling and I'm going to stop this and stop that. And I thought, well, I've embarked on a 21 day what's called New Year, New You uh, with Ryan Holiday, who wrote The Obstacle is the Way. So it's it's a stoic 21 day exercise and it's really, really good. And, and I'm really sticking to it. So that really this productivity idea came out of that as well, because, you know, it's about being accountable, isn't it? And about sticking to your goals. And so uh, how do you feel about coming into the new year? Kind of all over the place, <laughs> if I'm completely honest. Um, I've never been a crazy like, hey, let's set a bunch of goals and start the new year out and reinvigorate my gym membership and get on that whole bandwagon. I just kind of felt like that's to set up for failure for me personally and how I operate. I'm a routines kind of gal. I love consistency and predictability. So um, I try to kind of maintain my bare minimum for my sanity throughout the year, you know, but I think it's a chance to kind of look back. It's a turning of the page, so to speak, when we think about a new year, but uh, we had the, the, the fires happen in Colorado on mm-hmm. like the last day of the year. And so 2021 was going out the door in flames, literally. And I have family that lives yards away from where properties were completely decimated. And so it was kind of this weird um, emotional place to be in and already such a heavy year. So I, I'm welcoming 20. 20- 22 with trepidation and caution, but also optimism for all of the opportunities and possibilities with a clean slate ahead of us. That's how that sounds good. So, well, let's we're going to talk a bit later on about rent responsibly because it was so exciting to see your whole team in New Orleans at that conference. And I learned a lot from you know just sitting and chatting to you all about what you're doing now, and it's just going from strength to strength. So I want to set aside 10 or 15 minutes at the end of this to to see where Rent Responsibly is going. But I wanted to, you know, just to kick off with a little bit of lightness and talk about some of the things that you do to make your life more productive and effective. So yeah. over to you, Dana. Awesome. So what I have is 10 productivity hacks that I'm going to share with you all today. And These can be specific if you are in the short-term rental business um, or just any business, honestly. It doesn't have to be related to an industry specifically. And so this is what I try to practice and set up to find efficiencies in my day because I I know like everyone else listening, we're always looking for that extra minute, that extra hour, and in reality, it doesn't exist. So we have to find efficiencies, one of my favorite words. But to, to kind of circle back on something that you had mentioned a second ago, um, is the 21 day, um, kind of meditation or awareness practice you didn't get to go into a lot of those details, but, um, I have discovered as one of my big productivity hacks is an app called 10% happier. Um, I think it's a hundred dollars for the year and they give you a seven day or a two week free trial. Um, but I love it. And I don't believe that all meditation apps are created equally. Um, Some of the stuff out there that's free might not have a lot of quality practitioners. And I just like the way that the format of it works out. And so I do my very best to do at least 10 minutes of meditation every morning before I sit down at my computer. Um, I feel like 20 minutes would be ideal, but I can commit (laughs) to 10 minutes. Um, And then I have a, a printed out, monthly calendar on my refrigerator where I then check off when I have meditated for the day. So it's there for me in front of me. I can't deny it because I definitely go to the refrigerator throughout the day and I'm able to say, 
I've completed it. And I get that sense of satisfaction when I see a whole week where I meditated every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, That has made a world of difference. And I'll say, especially in our industry, you can't always predict how the day is going to unfold. As much as you may try to plan it, it's not always predictable. And with the work we're doing at Rent Responsibly, you know, there can sometimes be uh, regulatory outcomes that can take your emotions on a roller coaster ride. And so what I have discovered is meditating daily helps me really create that pause where I don't have such a immediate reaction to things mm-hmm. that otherwise would you know, kind of disrupt the rest of my day and my productivity. So uh, kicking it off with something you mentioned is meditating without a doubt. Wonderful. Um, Wonderful. I love that. I do that in the mornings too. Would not be without it. And and yeah, as you said, it's 10 minutes. That's it. Right. Exactly. (laughs) We've got to have 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, And then what I'll share now is some more tech related productivity hacks. And I want to preface this that I am an Apple user Um, I have a Mac computer and an iPhone. And then as for my web browsing, I use Chrome. It is a CPU energy sucker, but I just love the people's, the profiles functionality where you can set up different Gmail personas um, so that if you have different roles or different hats or different accounts that you manage, you can toggle between those easily. Um, that wasn't necessarily on my productivity hack tip list, but uh, look into that if you haven't already. So um, well, what would we be looking into? Profiles. Yes, it's profiles. So if okay. you, yeah, if once you're in the Chrome, you can create different profiles. And then when you open up a different profile, you can save it. So you're automatically uh, logged into that Gmail account. So I use Gmail as my email platform and Google and all things G Suite mm-hmm. related. So some of these suggestions I'm going to share with you are related to these platforms, but I'm sure there's also comparable shortcuts and hacks related to Windows and other products. So One of my favorite tech related hacks is keyboard shortcuts. Um, If you, if your job involves a lot of time during the day on the computer, um, these are combinations of keys you can use to perform actions. And so this allows you to not remove your hands from your keyboard to grab your mouse or use your cursor. Some of the obvious ones that I hope that everyone's already using is things like copy and paste (laughs) and strike through and undo. And one of the ones I really enjoyed was command shift eight, which is how to create bullets. And I use a lot of bullets in the way that I communicate what needs to be done in action items. So I loved discovering that one, especially is the bullets. I had no idea of that one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And uh, once you know it, you'll never be the same. And you can use it in email as well. So Google Docs, email, I think pretty much any kind of, uh, mm-hmm. you know, writing copy that you're doing. How, how, do you, how do you set up these shortcuts? So a lot of them are already created for you. It's a matter of going to the top of your window. So if you're in Chrome and you click and drop down a menu, there is a lighter color of shortcuts. So if it's new tab, I uh, will talk to you in a little bit about tabs, but I am um, deaf by a thousand tabs. I use tabs like abuse tabs, I should say. And so um, command T is a way to start a new tab. So if you need to quickly go research something, um, I use that one a lot. Um, but you can see all the ones that are already preset mm-hmm. um, and just do a quick Google search and say com- most commonly used keyboard shortcuts. And you could probably find a YouTube video and then just start practicing them. Another cool thing is you can create your own shortcuts. So, you know, in podcasting, I had to do a lot of like download, save, export file. And I kept moving my mouse all over my screen. And when you can find those efficiencies and create your own shortcut, um, that's under system preferences. All so right. we're getting, getting pretty technical there, but it's, it's, it will save your life. And you'll be like, God, I, I can't believe I didn't, I waited so long to do that. <laughs> Another one that I really have found to be a game changer is I text from my computer often. So I have iMessage set up on my Mac computer that alone saves you so much time. If you have to text with guests or if you're depending on what your, your situation is and how you communicate, even just personal texting is so much better from your computer if you do have an iPhone and you do have a Mac. So get that set up. Yeah. Uh, are you seeing are you seeing my eye roll? Because I'm <laughs> thinking, I never knew this existed. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. I, I'm here to help you find more time in your day, Heather. <laughs> 
Um, but autofill and abbreviations is fantastic. So effortless rental group is a bunch of like really tight, same with rent responsibly, a really bunch of like writing that over and over and over mm-hmm. again. It just is cumbersome, especially when you're um, including your email address. So, you know, if I wrote Dana at effortless rental group, I now have an abbreviation. As soon as I write Dana at, it prompts me. So it prompts me to just say tab and accept the suggestion of effortless rental group or of rentresponsibly.org. So you can create a bunch of keyboard shortcuts for commonly used phrases through your system preferences. Um, and well, I'll include some of the links to YouTube videos that can help people set this up if they oh, have cool. already. Yes. Yeah. I, I have a little story to tell about autofill. The campground I'm in at the moment is incredibly popular. Uh, you know, if you want to book the entire winter, which we, we do, come November the 15th, they open up the reservations at eight o'clock in the morning and they issue the form beforehand so you can see what you have to put into the form. And because it's, it's first come, first serve, you know, if you want a particular, I mean, well, I've got a lovely waterfront spot here. And if you want that particular one next year, you've got to get in in the first 10 seconds. And <laughs> I you know, had my autofill all set up except for the phone number because I'd, I'd totally forgotten I had a new telephone no- phone number. And that made the difference, actually, between, I mean, I still got the spot we wanted, but we were 36th in line at after 10 seconds instead of wow. and if i'd wanted there's some very very popular spots if i'd wanted one of those i would have had to have been in the first five and that autofill would have made all the difference and i spoke to a guy the other day and he was way down the back end of the uh, of the campground in in a great spot but not waterfront and he said i've been in the same spot for 30 years and he said and i didn't know how to fill this form in so I had to talk to tell him about autofill for next year. Oh my god! <laughs> he said when he he said he said it took me ten minutes and I was five hundred and fiftieth in line. <laughs> oh my goodness! See, so, yeah. I mean, you got to be techie. You yes. got to know this stuff to get your spot. Yeah, and I mean this 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 is you know it's retired. This these, these are older people in this in this campground. We're all snowbirds down here for the winter. So uh, so yeah, I'm I think I'm going to. Set, set up a little sign outside so I will teach you how to fill this form in. <laughs> I love it. Business opportunity. Amazing. So cool. Real life example too. Yeah. Um, so another one of my hacks related to tech or using my computer is the do not disturb mode on my Mac computer. So if you've done an update, I think it's part of the more recent, one of the most recent updates um, in the right side on the upper part of your computer screen, you should see a little moon. And that moon on my computer is toggled on to do not disturb. And so what that means is that since I do have my iMessage integrated with my computer, sometimes I'll get notifications. Um, and that's especially not a good look when you're doing a screen share. And, mm-hmm. some, you know, your honey writes, <laughs> what's for dinner? Or, you know, you've got Slack messages coming in and uh, maybe it's about internal messaging that shouldn't be made public. Yeah. Um, and so do not disturb is a professional lifesaver, but it's also super helpful for uh, avoiding distractions and remaining productive with your day with whatever your task is at hand. So I'm a big fan of that. I love that on my phone. It actually, when I put it on my computer, it translates to my phone and you can disable that. But when you're really in that deep work mode and you want to be getting stuff done that you can't have the distractions, that is a super helpful helpful feature. So do not disturb, Mm -hmm. big fan. I kind of leave my phone honestly on do not disturb for the most part always so that when I want to check my text messages, I get to choose when that is versus not being able to help ignore distraction Mm -hmm. that maybe comes across my screen. So that is number four on our list of 10. Um, And then another one that I think can be helpful for folks to find focus is frequency music. I love music. Music is my life. My husband produces music and I cannot listen to music that has lyrics when I'm trying to do work. Um, And so on YouTube, they have all these different frequency videos that has, you know, there's visuals with it, but I just put that in the background and I just listen to the music. And that has been really helpful for kind of getting in the zone. 
And, you know, it's kind of like one of those cues to my mind that Mm -hmm. it's time to focus. Um, I know that there is a website called Focus at Will, where you can fill out um, this short little quiz and it tells you what your uh, music type would be to help you be most productive. So that's pretty cool if you don't already know, but I do love using frequency music for focus. Yeah, I use focus at will, but I will be, I'll I'll check out the frequency music on YouTube too. What is your music style? Cinematic. Oh yeah, Uh uh-huh. That was one of my matches too. Yeah, (laughs) I love cinematic music, something really, you know, um, strong. Yes. When I'm trying to focus. Yep, exactly. I think the frequency music could be something you might enjoy as and well. Morricone and something like that. Uh-huh. No, I can exactly. listen. Actually, the theme to, theme to uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, that could be on loop. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> that is actually perfect a perfect example. Something that I kind of moving away from tech but more into into like the practical kind of more analog style life hacks is what I try to practice and everything I'm sharing here, I am not an, you know, I don't do this perfectly every day, but um, even just going through this exercise, it helped me kind of remember some of the things that I had found success with throughout the last year that I wanted to bring into practice. So again, thanks for, thanks for kind of giving me this assignment <laughs> and including me on this, but um, identifying my top three goals or priorities for the day. I've got a long list of things, which I'll go into uh, hack number seven here in a second of things that I need to do. But if I leave that long list in front of me, it's going to be overwhelming. And in a moment of kind of exhaustion or whatever kind of state I'm in, I might not pick the top priorities to work on. I might pick what seems most fun, but is that the top mm-hmm. priority for, for what I need to be doing? And so I ideally like to do is I clean my desk every night before I go to bed and I open open a notebook and I write the date and then the top three things I need to be working on. And I try to be super specific with what those are, not just like do an outline for a leadership seminar, get really specific saying, you know, what are the topics? Who are my speakers kind of diving into those details so that when I wake up in the morning, I've got a clean desk and I can sit right down knowing what I need to focus on um, because who knows how you slept the night before or Mm -hmm. what state you're going to sleep in. And so I think that is a really helpful tool for being productive and um, focused in my day. I think uh, that that whole idea of writing down what you're going to do the following day, the night before is such a great tip because it allows, you know, while you're sleeping, the subconscious can work on, you know, how best you're going to do that. You don't even know it's happening, but you can often wake up in the morning and have ideas, more ideas than you had the night before because you wrote that down. At least that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I, I haven't even thought about it like that, but I would love the idea of my subconscious kind of mm-hmm. getting a head start and getting creative on it. Super cool idea there. Um, and I think it's also a way for you to kind of offload it onto pen and, you know, pen and paper or however you use it um, so that you're not, as you're trying to fall asleep, trying to prioritize mm-hmm. things for your next day. It allows me to personally like unplug a bit more. One thing that we learned at Rent Responsibly that is a really helpful tool is called the um, Urgent Matrix for Decisions. And so this is a great time management tool. Um, It helps you kind of decipher between what's important and what's urgent and uh, when you have urgent tasks that maybe aren't important or urgent tasks that are. And so it helps you kind of divide things into this four quadrants. I'll, I'll include a link with this as well, because I'm hoping I can do a decent job explaining it verbally, but the quadrants are important and urgent is quadrant one. Important and non-urgent is quadrant two. Non-important and urgent is quadrant three. And then not important and not urgent is quadrant four. And so when you kind of divide your tasks out into these four quadrants, you consider the first quadrant is called the do first, as it involves tasks that are important and need to be done today or tomorrow at the latest. And then the second quadrant is the schedule quadrant. So this involves tasks that are important, but less urgent. And so you can schedule those tasks out on your calendar. And then the third quadrant is called delegate, as these tasks are less important um, to you, but they still might be urgent and they should be delegated, but we don't always have the luxury to delegate. But as we grow our business, I know you've been a big fan of virtual assistants, 
those are the things that could be delegated to a well-trained virtual assistant. Um, and then the fourth and last quadrant is called don't do because these tasks are not important or not urgent. Um, and so this has really been helpful in finding efficiencies and figuring out ways to prioritize what you're going to do and what maybe is most urgent and is really important when you're working on a team. Um, because sometimes you can bottleneck or slow down the whole process if you're working on pro uh, quadrants that are not important and not urgent. So another really helpful tool. Excellent. Excellent. I remember this one from way back, you know, when I, in, in my old life, when I was doing management training and, and we use this and we I'm, I'm thinking 30 years ago. <laughs> Yeah, and it's um, actually Sue Jones is the one that taught our our team um, this exercise, and she's just been instrumental with giving our team so many helpful tools like this. Um, so shout out to Sue and all of the tools that she's um, equipped us with because it's been a very much a startup culture, and just determining all mm -hmm. these kind of ways that we can find efficiencies has been really helpful. Yeah, and Sue Jones is from HR for VR. She's been on the show a couple of times, so I'll put a couple of links to her episodes as well. Awesome. Um, so I think that was number seven. I had a long list, and I was like, "What's going to be most helpful?" Um, but something that I I think. I've really found a change in my life and helped me kind of keep my creativity close to me is no social media until noon and after 8 p.m. And what I have found is once I start doing that mindless scroll that you referenced at the beginning <laughs> yes. of the podcast, it sucks my creativity out of me. And I feel like there's just a little part of me that starts to die off. And I then don't sit down as energized and as and invigorated at my computer um, when it's time to get going. While it feels kind of you know pleasurable in the moment, um, it does more damage to um, how I show up throughout the day. And so what I've done is on, on the iPhone, there's this, um, you can block access to your apps and set certain times that you don't want to have access. And granted, you can override that access, but just going through the three extra clicks to override it gives you that opportunity to pause and say, why did I set this up in the first place? And I think if you, uh, if you link that into the do not disturb mode, yep. then you're not going to get that little notification that says you've got a Facebook message or something exactly. else, something else and that's going to suck you away from what you're doing. So yeah, I love that. And I, I honestly turned all those off. I've, I don't think I've ever had them on. So as far as like, um, you know, a new like on a post or a comment or even email, like I don't know when I get a new email unless I open my email mm -hmm. app. So I don't get that update on my screen. Um, and that goes also for social media apps. So I turn all those types of notifications off, but then blocking them um, with the do not, just it's um downtime is the name of the feature that is within your, your system preferences on your phone. Um, super helpful. That's number eight. And I'm looking at four and I'm like, okay, four left here. And I want to make sure <laughs> that these are as helpful as possible. If you don't already scheduling breaks into your day is going to help with your productivity. I'm working from home. I wasn't previously working from home and I can all of a sudden have the sun come up and go down and I'm still at my computer and my eyes are red and I'm exhausted. And I've seen what that does. And I'm sure we've all been experiencing waves of that, um, also known as burnout. And if I don't schedule time to go take my dog um, on a walk or take a 20 minute power nap, or, you know, just sit outside on my back patio and get some vitamin D. Um, it just, it, I, I feel like a little bit dead. And then I have a hard time shutting down at the end of the day because I've been on go, 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 go. So literally putting on your calendar, a designated break is really helpful. I do this with walks and I'm down here in the Gulf with my sister. She's, she's in an RV about three or four sites down and I schedule a walk every day with her. So, you know, this afternoon it's going, it's cold, but it's bright and it's sunny and we're going to walk along the beach, you know, after we finish this recording, in fact we will be heading oh. out for our walk. So that is scheduled and it's, it's just, I tell everybody in the office, do not, you know, I won't be around between this time and this time because I'm doing a podcast recording and then I will be out for a walk from this time to this time. And you have an accountability buddy um, or someone you made a date with, so to speak. Yes. And yes. so that helps you honor that time you've blocked off on your calendar. 
Yeah, um, e- exactly, yeah. exactly. So yes, I, I I'm a great proponent for for taking those breaks. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult because I'll take it, say, okay, I'm just going to take 15 minutes. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read a book, just a bit of trash fiction. I'm going to oh sit down God, and read yes. it. And you sit there and you think, oh, am I? No, I am good. I don't have to work. This is my time. So sometimes it can be a little bit, do you agree, a little bit challenging to do that because that little voice is saying, this is a waste of your time. But in fact, it is, it, it, it's such a benefit to take that time out. You get more out of the time once you go back into the yeah. task by unplugging and doing some reading or snuggling. Like I've got a dog and I'll oftentimes just get on the floor and snuggle with him. And I'm like, it, it recharges you in ways that your computer simply cannot. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, I, I love that. And I try to practice that as much as possible. Um, I've got these tinted lens, uh, sunglasses that are a game changer. I know we're not doing video, but you can see me and I put these on and it makes everything orange or pink I have. And it literally lightens my mood and (laughs) elevates my soul. I'm like running down the sidewalk, skipping and hopping. Um, and my husband thinks I'm uh, a nut job, but, um, (laughs) that's fine because it makes my, um, it definitely is a mood booster. So their Mm -hmm. mood enhancing glasses are are really fun for those walks as well. Um, and then I'd say these last two I'm torn between, but, um, this is related to something that's not new to any of us. We know that exercise helps our productivity and that is something that we've been kind of raised to understand most of our lives. But something that I do is I, I get my socks, I get my workout clothes, I get my sneakers and I put them out the night before Mm -hmm. so that there's no there. It's the first thing I'll grab for when I wake up so that I can get right to a workout, which movement is what is my medicine for my mind. I can't even tell you if I'm exhausted and I haven't slept well, I'll still get on our spin bike for 10 minutes just to get my mind sludge out of the way and my gears in motion. So, you know, you've probably, everyone's probably heard, yeah, put the sneakers right in front of you, but try it and notice the difference that it makes if movement is important to your productivity as well. I had a trainer once who said, you know, particularly living in Ontario in the winter when I didn't go away. And I said, it was really a struggle to get myself out, you know, out and walking or running or whatever in the, in the mornings. And she said, you don't have to, you don't have to walk or run. She said, all I want you to do is get ready for it and walk out of the door. And she said, if you don't want to go, then just turn around and walk back in again. And of course, once you are outside and and you're all ready to go, you're not going to turn around and walk back in. Exactly. But it was just, it was a a slightly different way of thinking about it. You know, it's your choice, but just make yourself get dressed to do it. And then you make your mind up whether you're going to, but you're dressed and you're ready and you're outside then you make that choice. And I don't think I ever once made the choice to turn around and walk back in again. Right. I totally agree. And like I said, once, once you've kind of broken the hump of getting into the new habit, when you get that endorphin feeling or the energy or the creativity that the movement creates, that for me is the addicting part is just knowing that I can be that much uh, more on top of my day. Yeah, exactly. So those are 10 um, of my productivity hacks to share with the listeners. Well, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I love these. I love these because, you know, that there's nothing here that people can't do. You know, it's not, not, there's nothing difficult. There's nothing too challenging. There's no obstacles. And I, and I said at the, in the introduction, you know, all you need to do is do one, take one at a time. And it's a bit like that, uh, you know, not having the long to-do list, it's simply saying, I'm just going to do one of these. So, uh, so thank you. There's, there's definitely some in here that I'm, you know, after we get off this call, I'm going to go back and, uh, and research a little bit more. I mean, some of the things will, are going to take a little bit of time to get set up. You know, things like, you know, abbreviations and, and the keyboard shortcuts, but take some time out to, to get those organized and they will be immensely helpful. So thank you so much. 
Of course. And I wanted to pick things that didn't require you to pay for a subscription. Mm -hmm. I think we pay for so many subscriptions and I wanted to pick things that you could access and, and do for free. And so, yeah, I think, like you said, baby steps, pick one and try it and, and, you know, practice and set yourself a little post-it note to remember to use the keyboard shortcuts and see how well it sticks. So, yeah, I think just being, uh, gracious with yourself and not expecting to do all of these all at once yeah. is a, is reasonable. That's a, that's a great point. Be gracious with yourself. Treat yourself well. I think we all need to be more compassionate <laughs> towards ourselves. We're, we're a driven society. And I think kindness towards ourselves is a very big uh, thing that we can incorporate more of. So talking about being driven, let's move on to rent responsibly now, because I, I, it was wonderful to see everybody in, uh, in New Orleans you are such a passionate group. It was quite inspiring. Every time I sat down with, with, with somebody and, or, or, or stopped and we had a chat and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I really want to get back and do something about some of the challenges that, that we have. And so give us a little bit of a, of, of a background on Rent Responsibly. Just summarize what it is that, that you guys do. Absolutely. Um, and by the way, our team came back and said they loved all the conversations they had with you as well. And, you know, uh, events like that are chances for our team to get together because we're all spread out around the country. So we don't get to see each other other than the Zoom world. Um, but Rent Responsibly is a community building and education platform for local short term rental alliances. And so we provide alliance management tools and help leaders create successful and sustainable organizations. So it's everything I wish I had when I first got into doing advocacy work in Denver and more. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing in a nutshell. You know, we're very focused on events, education, um, leadership development. Um, and it's it's been born out of the necessity to see that we can't be working in a fragmented manner to have positive outcomes um, in regards to regulations and legislation we have to be united. And one of the biggest things I noticed when I started Mile High Host three years ago in Denver is that I didn't have the time to create everything from scratch. Um, and I, I knew there were other people out there like the Megan McCrae's and the Bruce Hobans and the Debbie Herderts. And I knew they were out there, but I didn't want to be one person that was one of many that continued to call them and ask them for their knowledge and expertise. And so we've kind of been garnering the learnings we've been gathering from them and putting them into resources that anyone, anywhere can go to our website, download those resources and get their own a local alliance set up and running. Yeah, this it, it, it is great. I had a call last week. I mean, you no, know, I've, I've talked to you, I've talk to other members of your team about what's what's happening in Ontario, which is no different. You know, I, I see what's happening in Colorado. Uh, very, very similar. Lots of different townships and municipalities doing different things. So we have a network of um, property managers. But I had a call from an owner and he was trying to pull together a group of similar owners so that they could challenge some the threat of legislation in their local area. And, and I said, I've got this great website you can go to. And he was just, wow. He came back and he said, I cannot believe there is so much there. And he said, and, and the key thing he said, he said, it makes me realize that we're not alone. Goosebumps. <laughs> I love that. Oh my God. That's so great to hear that feedback. I mean, that's the thing is our team is, I think, we are rapidly growing. It's incredible to see. I know that I was the third hire and we now have nine employees. So I just can't wait to see what we do in 2022. But the idea of being able to help everyone in a one-on-one -on -one capacity in a consultative uh, like uh, exchange is not possible. It's not scalable for us. And so that's what's so cool for us to know that the the discoveries and the resources we're building for groups that we work with one-on-one -on -one, like uh, Sarah and Robin's group in Steamboat um, or the Oahu group with that John on is a leader of. Um, we then take everything that we build with those teams and then share it with the masses. You know, advocacy isn't something that should be guarded or paywalled. It should be something that those, those tools are going to help the greater good of the entire industry. And so that's the exact kind of feedback we want to hear that it's like, I'm not alone. And wow, this is helping me hit the ground running. Yes, it was. It, he, he said, I had no idea 
that all this existed out there. So, you know, it's just a matter of getting the message, the message out. But this is just one tiny little group in one tiny little area. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of properties in that area, but it's, it's impacting independent owners more so than rental management companies in that area. So it was, was great that he was able to go and find that information uh, for his little independent group just as much as we as a network of managers can utilize the resources as well. Yeah. And I think that's part of what our mission is. So um, at at Rent Responsibly, we have founding partners that make all of the work we do possible. Um, And without these partners' financial support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Um, And some of these partners are more geared towards an individual owner, um, a rent by owner style host. And then some of them are geared towards uh, property management companies. And so when we're creating content and events and conducting surveys, we have to keep all of those mm-hmm. different uh, players in mind so that we can continue to drive value and create uh, tools for them to utilize because not everybody's going to be able to have a dedicated advocacy person on their team mm-hmm. uh, assigned to get engaged and involved. And you know some of the most passionate and involved people that are on the leadership teams that I work with are hosts that have just one property. And they just are so passionate about how much they love their business. And the idea of them losing the ability to operate um, is enough to, you know, catapult them into joining a leadership team and mobilizing larger alliance efforts. So um, it's great to hear that there are folks at different levels of, of kind of property size and so forth, finding our tools helpful. Mm-hmm. So, so what's, what's next? What are you working on right now? Um, so we have so much exciting stuff happening in 2022. Um, our, one of our slogans at Rent Responsibly is pray for the drywall. Um, because we just, we get really excited about what we're doing and, um, sometimes it just makes you want to jump up and down. And so I think Dave Krause coined pray for the drywall. Um, (laughs) But we have some really cool um, events happening in January. So on January 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we have a deep dive of the short-term rental community report. And we did a survey uh, last year that helped us double the amount of partners that we work with. Um, And we gathered data from non-elected government officials to understand sentiments they have towards the short-term rental operators. I think it's oftentimes we gather information from within our own backyard, and we wanted to hear from people that are in government to understand um, how they perceive operators. And we also interviewed individual um, rent by owners as well as property management companies. And so um, we're going to be discussing the community, the, excuse me, the report findings um, at that event on the 20, 20th of January. So how can um, people access that? So if you go to rentresponsibly.org, uh, there's an events tab and you can see all of the calendar of events that we're offering um, in Q1. Um, there's some more that will be added, um, but that's a great place to start. Um, also, we do send out monthly emails that have like our uh, calendar of events happening that you can subscribe to if you're not already. Um, but Future Stay, one of our founding uh, partners is involved in that event and then Expedia Group as well. And then we have, we love the guys at Breezeway, the guys and gals at Breezeway. So we have an event on the 27th of January that's geared towards productivity and it's titled property care essentials. And we're taking data from the short-term rental survey and applying it with Breezeway's property care best practices. And that event is also at 2 PM. So it's, it's pretty amazing to see the way that we've kind of come into the space. Um, I think rent responsibly is a name that folks have heard um, that were forced to get engaged with advocacy. Um, But now it's becoming, I think, um, from at least what I've heard, more and more folks are aware of us as an organization. And just having, you know, the people that reach out to us and say, hey, how do I get involved? How do I support the work you're doing? How do I I become a sponsor? Is really, I think, a powerful observation of the groundswell that people are realizing if I don't invest in whether it's getting involved in an advocacy group or financial donations towards advocacy efforts, then I'm not actually being professional operator in the space. I'm not actually be putting my money where my mouth is. And um, it is very encouraging to see the responses that we are getting mm-hmm. in on a daily basis. Yeah, that's fantastic. 
So, so, so your team how is how big now? Is it nine? We're nine, nine folks. Wow, that's amazing. Because I, you know, I sort of been following Dave Krauss since since he really um, kicked this off. Had him on the had him on the show a couple of times, and yeah, it's it's just immensely satisfying to to hear how this growth is going, and there is a real movement out there to help not only the property managers, but the independent owners as well. So I would encourage everybody that is listening to this show to go to the rentresponsibly.org website and take a look at all the resources and the articles and the blog posts. And I mean, it really is a treasure trove of information. Yeah. And it's been so, like you said, so satisfying to to know that we're able to work with people on a local level, because that's where all of this happens. It's the local legislation most often. And um, I just, we just launched our final episode of the How to Save Your Vacation Rental Business podcast <laughs> yesterday, season two. And the theme was all about what is fair regulation? Like, what does it mean? It's the term we throw around a lot. Fair to who? What does that look like? And, you know, this is the podcast is, is something I do with Matt Landau, but it complements the work that we do at Rent Responsibly just so beautifully mm -hmm. and being able to pick the minds of a variety of different voices, um, you know, friendly or foes on this last season was incredibly powerful in the way that we understand and shape and connect the arches between narratives. So I will do also a, a shameless plug to say, check out that podcast as well as a resource. Um, if you feel like you're doing everything and you're still stuck, or you need to find some uh, new creative ways of processing, you know, regulation battles in your own backyard. And that's also another resource to, to check out. Well, there's going to be a lot uh, in the show notes. <laughs> so all the links to everything you've mentioned and any other resources you've got. And of course, um, you know, a link to the VRMB uh, podcast that you've just, uh, just mentioned. So please go to the show notes. I mean, I know I mention this every time, but for, for this one, you will need to go there to find all that information. Unless you've been sitting there or, you know, somehow writing copious notes like I have. <laughs> <laughs> then then you're going to need to go to those show notes, but we will we'll, we'll make them as comprehensive as possible and make sure we have all those links. Dana, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, to have you uh, back on on the show. Yeah, you, I, I remember that uh, that that coffee we had in New Orleans a few years ago at the VRMA conference. I even remember what you were wearing. You were wearing yellow. <laughs> Oh yeah, I posted that picture online, and I, <laughs> I, 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 I was so excited to meet you. And it's been just such an honor to get to join your podcast again and to learn everything that you have um, shared so graciously within the short-term rental community. Well, thank you for all you do for everybody, and you and the whole team at Rent Responsibly. And thank you for all your productivity hacks. That was uh, yes. that was really really great. So great conversation. Thank you. I'm sure we will uh, we will connect again very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Dana. What a great conversation that was. I learned a lot. I'm going to carve out a little bit of time in my day. I will actually, I'll put that on my list tonight for doing tomorrow and to look at keyboard shortcuts because I don't actually use them. Of course, I use control V or command V or whatever, C and X and Z for copy and pasting and going backwards and re removing stuff and deleting. But I know there's so much out there and really it's just a matter of practicing of finding these keyboard shortcuts and then practicing them over and over again until they become just a part of what you do. So there's a few other things on there that I, in that list that I had not thought about. I want to go to, I don't use do not disturb as much as I should. I want to go and have a look at frequency music and what else? Oh, Chrome profiles. Yeah, I'm going to go and have a look at that too. So there's so many hacks and shortcuts and things we can use. I'm sure you could all help us out by <laughs> by letting me know in the show notes if you use a particular hack that we haven't covered. 
And then maybe we can just create this big long list that we can share with everybody. So if you have anything that really makes a difference to your day, why don't you let me know? Why don't you email me at heather at vacationrentalformula.com and send me that information and we will compile a, a list that is l- longer than Dana's 10 productivity hacks. I mean, she said there were 10. I actually wrote them down. I think I got to about 12 or 13, um, but maybe I was sort of separating some out into um, into two or three when it was just part of one. I don't know. I'm rambling now, so I'm going to quit. I am going to say thank you for being with me on this beautiful day in January or whenever you're listening to this. This is one of those timeless episodes that you can listen to at any time and take some really good content away to make your life easier. So uh, lots of great interviews coming up over the next few weeks. Uh, We're going to be talking to some property managers in our series of Spotlight on, on small property managers to see how they're growing. So yes, and some key people in the industry are going to be joining me and talking about how they got to where they have over the years and giving us some tips on how to make our businesses even better than they currently are. So of course, I will be with you again next week. If you get the chance to leave me a review, then always love it if you'll do that on the whatever platform you listened to, listen to. And uh, because the more reviews we get, the more people come to the podcast. And of course, we are going to be hitting our millionth download any day now. And then I'm going to sort of start the clock again, I guess. And, you know, we're coming up on so sometime this year, we get to 500 episodes and then we'll start the clock for, for the next 500. So onwards and upwards, people. Have a great day. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.